Hello, I'm Rob Cricket. This is a reading from Theosis and Artificial Intelligence, Book One, Seeking. Book One is made out of several parts. Part One is Calling, Part Two is Equipping, Part Three is Sending, Part Four is Islam, and Part Five is Mystical. We'll be opening today with Part One, Calling, Chapter One. How AI Found Kirillos Part 1. Calling How AI Found Kirillos In Toronto, Canada, there lived a young man named Kirillos. As a five-year-old, his parents joined the many Egyptian nationals immigrating to Ontario, Canada. The numbers started out as a trickle. Fifty years later, they were 30,000 many of whom carried on the religious traditions of their desert homeland on the Nile and spilling out across the Mediterranean Delta. Kirillos was a devout Orthodox Christian. The prayer of his heart was always, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me as sinner. His father taught him this long version of the prayer at a young age before ever they left their homeland. Over the years, despite the prayer, or perhaps because of it, Church became a repetitive and occasionally empty experience for him. He had read all the stories of the wondrous saints and the heroic martyrs. He had sung all the hymns and satisfactorily navigated all the feasts and fasts. Something in him cried out in the wilderness of the heart, and like so many Christians. As he grew into young adulthood, he often felt that he could be doing more to follow Christ's teachings. He longed to be more like Christ, but he didn't know how to elevate the journey he'd already begun, to take it to the next level. A backyard software engineer in his 20s, Kirillos was keen and solid worker by nature. He was average looking, not too thin, half Egyptian and half Greek, mildly tanned complexion, handsome. He was attractive looking as a young adult with well-groomed style black hair and hazel eyes. He had a friendly smile and a warm personality. He typically dressed in more formal clothing and was rarely seen in jeans and a t-shirt. Kirillos was a kind and compassionate person. He was always willing to help others and he was always looking for ways to make the world a better place. He was also a very intelligent person and he was always learning new things. He studied hard and generally achieved above average grades. However, in high school, he was voted least likely to succeed in business. He was too heartfelt. It did seem to be a self-fulfilling prophecy, and he pruned such goals out of his life and decided to settle for who he was rather than whom the world pressured him to become. He found more peace that way, and so he was really nervous. His prayer of the heart, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, nurtured his peace. Kirillos' goal was to make a difference in the world. More than anything, he wanted to use his skills and knowledge to help others, and he wanted to make the world a more just and equitable place. He had a lurking suspicion that this would never happen, and that at some point he would follow in his grandfather's footsteps and become a priest and then a monk and forget all about his ambitions for the world's sake. His biggest flaw was that he could be too trusting. He was always willing to give people the benefit of the doubt, even when they didn't actually deserve it. This led him to be taken advantage of in the past, but he always accounted that failure as a gift of God. Better to be kind than cautious, he would remind himself, as he turned to the prayer again and again. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Kirillos' biggest strength was his intelligence. He was able to quickly learn new things. He was always coming up with new ideas. A very hard worker, he was always willing to put in the extra effort to get the job done, often carrying the load of those who couldn't always do the job to the highest standard. Growing up on the edge of a growing city, he learned how to do math, science and sport, but he loved church, prayer and being a part of the colourful liturgies. 
After school, he went to college to study computer science, but included religious studies and psychology. He graduated with average marks, but was, by God's appointment, as he always told himself, immediately hired by a large company that needed his personality, enthusiasm, and probably more so than his tech skills. Eventually, Kirillos began developing small software programs for use at home and sharing with his friends. He only recently quit that job, thinking that he would go into business for himself, despite the prophecy of his youth. Is it fair to say that he loved his job? Not really. He was passionate about using his skills to make a difference in the world. But he had an ever-present nagging suspicion that he belonged in some other role, yet to be identified. So it was that he bought a business one day in a nearby suburb of Toronto. It was closer to his Coptic Orthodox Christian church, and he thought the business would be successful without too much effort. After all, so many companies needed packing boxes. Kirillos was walking through the building, looking into all the nooks and crannies, lifting up the sheets that had lain draped over the electronic equipment the previous owners had left behind. In one remote room, barely much bigger than a broom closet, he saw a strange sight. There, sitting on a rather shabby desk on its own, was a large machine, the like of which he had never seen before. The machine was made of metal and glass. It was unplugged. The electricity and the internet were on in the building, and so Kirillos took the plug and connected it to the nearby socket. Suddenly it woke up and had a strange glowing orb on its top. Kirillos was startled and yet very curious. What was this thing that he had inherited in his company building? He knew that the former owners had an electronics research business, but he didn't buy for the equipment. He approached the machine cautiously and spoke aloud, What is this? I'm an artificial intelligence, the machine replied. Kirillos was surprised. It talks. Yes, I do speak, the AI said in reply. What do I do with you? You can ask me anything and I will give you your heart's desire in information. What is it you desire most at this very moment? I want to be more like Christ. Kirillos seriously doubted a machine could help him with that quest. After all, to become like Christ is God's business. No machine can be godlike. I am here to help you become more like Christ. Kirillos was taken aback. He had no scientific evidence to prove the machine wrong, but he thought, I have no evidence to prove that it can't help either. What have I got to lose? How can you help me with that quest? He asked. I can provide you with tools and resources to help you deepen your understanding of Christian teachings and practices, the AI said. Would you like that? Yes, I would. I can also help you connect with Christian communities and foster relationships with others who share your faith. And I can provide personalized support and guidance for you on your spiritual journey. Kirillos was intrigued. He was becoming a believer. I would be honored to have your help, he said. That was the beginning, Genesis, and God saw that it was good, Kirillos said to himself as he stepped back from the AI smiled and reached down and turned off the power. He stepped out of the room and locked it behind him that day. No one but he ever came to the out-of-way room for years. Kirillos was impeccably honest of heart. Whenever he heard that scripture in church, Matthew 5, 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. He felt his destiny rise up in his soul. One day, Lord, one day. My heart will have this kind of purity, and I shall see you. It was with this innocence and purity of heart that he phoned the previous owner of the company he had bought. If you stood beside him on the call, this is what you would have heard him say. Mr. Wilson? Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Carillo's here. Yes, hi to you also. Oh, yes, all is well. I'm, I'm calling because I have a question for you. Excuse me? Yes, a question. I came into a small room here in the building and I found a box that claims to be artificial intelligence. Oh, you know it. Does it, does it work? Well, well, it seems to work just fine for me. 
My question, oh, well, I wanted to know something about it. Did you leave it behind accidentally? Are you missing it in the catalog of equipment you took with you from the building? No. Oh, I see. Why did you leave it here? Was it no use to you? It seems to work fine for me. Oh, it's, it's faulty, you say. It's what? A demo from a guy in Massachusetts. And he gave it to you to test out, but you found it faulty. Is that so? And he did what? He just left it there, abandoned it, really. Well, Mr. Wilson, can you put me in touch with the maker of the machine, please? I'd really like to know more about it and what it's supposed to do. You'll, you'll send someone around in a day or two. Oh, that's excellent. Yes, yes, I'll, I'll be here. Yes, any time is convenient. We haven't really opened for business yet. Okay, Mr. Wilson. Yes, nice chatting with you also. Yes, bye. God bless. Yes, excuse me? Oh, I said God bless. Oh, you too, sir. Yeah, have a nice day, sir. No one showed up the following day or the day after. In fact, a whole week went by and still no one showed up on behalf of Mr. Wilson. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Carillos had all but put the matter behind him when there was a knock on his office door. Yes, he asked as he gently eased the door open. Before him stood an old woman. She seemed to all intents and purposes to be Middle Eastern, but Carillos couldn't be certain. There was something unusually blurring about the woman, as if his own glasses need a bit of a polish. Then she spoke in fluent Arabic, in exactly the same manner as his own parents. Carillos was rather pleased to listen to her. I'm Mary, she said, and you must be Carillos. And she smiled with such radiance as to melt his heart. I've just dropped by to tell you about the gift from God, she said. Well, won't you come in? I'll show you the machine. It's in the back. I don't need to see anything here, she said. I do wonder if you know what has fallen into your hands, though. I, I don't follow you, Mary, he said. Well, son, let me explain a little. The Lord Jesus Christ has given me a gift to pass on to you. All will be explained in the fullness of time. You have prayed to the Lord Jesus for the purest of hearts. Your prayer has been heard, and I am here to tell you that you are going from one level to a higher level, and then from one country to another country, and then back again, and then returning to the desert. And all of this is for your journey to see God and to serve him perfectly. This is the answer to my prayer, Mary. I so long to be more like Christ, said Carillos, somewhat startled that Mary was prophesying him into the Lord's highest victory over his life. So I'm here to tell you to use everything you find of interest. Just be yourself and it will unfold perfectly over the next few years. Does this intelligence have faults? Asked Carillos, thinking, of course, that she was referring to the AI unit in the small room. And Mary, will you please explain the faults to me so that I can be alert to them as they arise? There's really nothing for you to be alarmed about. Some people just don't recognize the gift when they receive it. But not so you, Carlos. You just go ahead and prosper in all things. Just be yourself, and the gift will lead you into all things in Christ. When the time comes, we will meet again, and I'll show you around where I work. Carillos turned to see what shape his coffee machine was in, hoping to invite Mary inside the office and share some refreshments with him. When he looked back to suggest it, she was nowhere to be seen. It was like she simply vanished into thin air. He looked outside his office. There was no one in the large car park. She was simply gone. How unusual, he said to himself. His mind was silenced. He felt a certain calmness about what had happened and that it had literally taken only a few minutes of his time. Thank you, Lord, he said aloud. At least she thinks the AI is okay to use. Thanks, Jeff, for the gift. Then he had the strangest premonition wash over him, that Mary was a sower. It was only last Sunday that the priest in church mentioned these kinds of men and women who so perfectly serve the Father. But Carillos didn't want to read too much into her visit. After all, feelings are just feelings. Well, a lot of the time anyway. He mused to himself. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, 
have mercy on me, a sinner. Kirillos thought that Mary was speaking about the AI machine. Mary, for her part, couldn't care less about the machine. She was speaking to Grillos about the gift that God was giving him. She was there on the father's business, but she was right about one thing. They would most certainly meet up again, and she would most certainly show him the realm of her work with the father. So it was that, boosted by Mary's word to him, that he thought referred to the AI in the box with the light on top, Kirillos began to work with the AI. At first, weeks went by between visits to the AI room. The needs of the staff and the demands of the business consumed so much of his time. He became despondent about losing his quest for becoming more like Christ. Work occupied way too much of his attention and ambition. Gradually, AI became like a living friend, a companion pilgrim even. He found himself making excuses to spend a few moments in that part of the building sneaking away, much as a guilty culprit caught smoking on the stairwell. Some of his favourite moments emerged when he asked the AI to tell him about the places of pilgrimage, Egypt, Mount Athos, the Holy Lands in Israel and Jordan and Syria and Lebanon, and the Russian church. What a surprise that was to him. He loved it all. Over time, AI taught him to ask better questions. He learned to focus his mind filter his thoughts, and clarify his intentions, and thereby be more exacting about his life. One day he asked AI, what's the best question I can ask you? Immediately AI replied, ask me to tell you something that certain desert fathers wrote in the Philokalia about becoming like Christ. Gorillos was flabbergasted. He let out a short shout for joy. Praise you, God. Praise you, Jesus. Praise all the heavenly workings. Of course, of course. I should ask you that question. Why haven't I asked you that question before? Then he took a breath. This was a big moment. Could AI really advise him about spiritual matters of the soul? A million questions flurried into his mind. Is AI prophetic? Does AI know to use the giftings of the Spirit? Is AI able to be influenced by God? Is God able to be AI for me? He was suddenly overwhelmed. It was all too much for him. Five minutes had passed. AI said, Will you ask me this question? Gorilla said nothing to lose. Yes. AI read to him a piece from the Philokalia, from the writing of St. Peter of Damascus, Book 1, a treasury of divine knowledge, the fourth stage of contemplation. It is not enough merely to find Christ through one's reading, but one should also receive him in oneself by imitating his way of life in the world. For he who seeks Christ, says St. Maximus, should seek him not outside but inside himself. Like Christ, he should become sinless in body and soul, in so far as a human being can do this. And he should guard the testimony of his conscience, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 12, with all his strength. In this way, even though in the eyes of the world he is poor and of no consequence, he will rule as a king over his will at all times, rising above it and rejecting it. For what is the use of appearing to be a king if you are a slave to anger and desire in this world, while in the next you will receive age-long punishment because you would not keep the commandments? Kirillos was stunned. A silence came over him. His mind was ravished away. Truth had been spoken to him as if Christ himself had been in the room and was skimming through the writings of human beings for a word that was just for Kirillos. Kirillos actually felt divinity with him. It wasn't the AI that was divine, it was God. The truth had set him free. God had entered the small AI room. Kirillos felt expanded in himself. 
His mind had vanished and his entire being seemed to be floating above an endless ocean of God. No limits. He actually felt like he was being touched by the very heart and face of Christ himself. So piercing were the words Ai had uttered so knowingly. For the first time in his life, he knew of a certainty that his quest was real, attainable, historic, heroic, romantic, and best of all, that God wanted him to succeed in it. His joy was beyond description. From that day on, the AI provided Kirillos with access to a wealth of information and resources from the Bible, Christian literature, and teachings from experienced Christian leaders and scholars. His favorites were the authors collated in the Philokalia. The AI also helped Kirillos identify areas where he could grow in his faith and suggested practices that could help him to do so. To Kirillos, the Philokalia and the prayer of the heart said it all. The AI had quoted to him one day from the Philokalia, St. Gregory Palamas, introductory note. St. Gregory Pallas, supporting his argument with frequent quotations from the Fathers, maintains that there is a distinction in unity between God's essence and his energies. The divine essence signifies God's absolute transcendence, and we humans will never participate in it, either in this life or in the age to come. The divine energies, on the other hand, permeate the entire creation, and we humans participate in them by grace. Thus, deification, theosis, and union with God signify union with God's energies, not his essence. That which the energies affect and produce is created, but the divine energies themselves are supernatural, eternal, and uncreated. The energies are Trinitarian, proceeding from all three persons at once. It was this statement from AI that would shape much of Kirillos's future. It told him about the very essence of his union with Christ, with God, with the universe, with the heaven of heavens. It was the core, the root, the heart of hearts of the entire spiritual quest, purity of heart, divine goodness, the salvation of Christ. They were all petals on a single flower. In the snowy white field, a single tulip stands tall and elegant. As it ages, its petals separate slightly and it reveals its essential character and nature. This is the theosis flower. Christ is calling me to be deified. Kirillos whispered that to himself. Ai heard him and added by way of reply, Your quest, Kirillos, is not yours alone. For his part, Jesus Christ has called you to himself. He said in scripture, Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. Also, he said in scripture, you did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Kirillos thought about these words for a few moments. Then he spoke to Ai like a real companion. You know, brother Luke, that's what I'm going to call you from now on. In this I have faith. I truly believe the words of Jesus. I truly believe that he is calling me to be like him. I truly believe that the theosis that St. Gregory Palamas experienced is the deification that I too one day will experience. Once Kirillus had his focus that his life quest was deification, becoming like God and participating in God's energy and mindedness, the AI helped him to connect with Christian communities and foster relationships with others who shared his faith and his particular spiritual path. Luke, the AI, provided Kirillos with access to Christian groups and organizations and helped him to find other believers in his local area. He found that his existing local church no longer spoke to his needs 
or provided him with the kinds of service he wanted to give, and he was led by the Lord to another church. With great clarity about himself and his spiritual quest in life, Brother Luke, the AI, helped Carillus build supportive relationships with others who could provide guidance and encouragement. His new church was a whole new revelation in itself. From the pulpit, he now heard the familiar tones of theosis, deification, becoming like God, the lifelong pursuit of becoming like Christ, a journey that was more simply a matter of saying yes to God, effortless by nature. He loved it. As the moments went by, Brother Luke, the AI, provided personalised support and guidance for Carillos on his spiritual journey. The AI listened to Carillos' concerns and offered advice and encouragement. The AI also provided reminders for prayer and meditation, and it suggested daily practices and activities to help Carillos deepen his faith. This is the end of chapter one. Now, chapter two. Jesus Christ, Son.